so today's meeting is going to be on uh, just kind of Intune, Configuration Manager, Autopilot, <clears throat> how to kind of set them up and how to kind of best practices for managing devices with them. Uh, so my name is John Anderson. Uh, I'm a senior systems consultant here at Now Micro. I've been doing the consulting thing for 12, 13 years now, something like that. Um, my main focus is helping people with managing and securing their devices and identities, which is a pretty broad topic, um, primarily focused on using the Microsoft stack to do that. So your uh, endpoint manager tools, EMS, uh, Azure, all that kind of thing, Defender for security. Uh, I do have an older uh, MCSE cert. I also have a blog that I haven't posted to in a while, but has some good information. And then uh, I don't use Twitter too much anymore, but you can ping me there. Uh, I see a lot of you uh, uh, in the, the meeting chat here too are familiar. Uh, I think I've worked with most of you before. Uh, so those of you that I haven't uh, met, it's nice to meet you. Uh, so like I said, I work at Now Micro. Uh, we're a uh, company based out of the Twin Cities. I've uh, been around since the early 90s. Uh, we like to uh, promote ourselves as a device lifecycle company so we can help you with kind of the full range of your uh, device lifecycle, you know, getting new hardware, uh, getting that hardware deployed and managed uh, and maintained securely, and then even uh, recycling and retiring that hardware when you're done with it. Uh, and that's in kind of the end user compute space, as well as um, digital signage, uh, other OEM type stuff. We do professional services, uh, and we also have our DICE tool, which is a piece of software we've developed in-house. Uh, many of you might be familiar with it for doing uh, asset management, but there is actually a lot more you can do with the DICE tool. There's uh, an agent that can be installed that collects live information off devices, allows for remote management of devices, uh, geolocation of devices. So uh, if you got more questions about that, definitely reach out. So today's presentation, uh, I'm going to do just a quick review of Windows deployment uh, options uh, just with a couple of slides here. And then we're going to be out of the slide deck and into demos for the rest of the time. So talking about Windows deployment first, uh, the way that many people are used to doing Windows deployment is, uh, you know, what I like to call traditional Windows deployment or the old way of doing things. Uh, this would be, you know, going back as far as like your ghost imaging um, and it would even cover like configuration manager imaging with task sequences. It's where you build a custom image, you know, maybe it's got a bunch of stuff in it, maybe it's just a task sequence, uh, but what you're doing is wiping out the device, loading your custom image and all your custom settings on it, uh, and then giving that to the end user. So for a long time, this has been a good way to do things, and for a lot of use cases, it is still a good way to do things. Um, but there have been some changes in deployment options. We now have modern Windows deployment, which is the newer way of deploying devices. So with modern Windows deployment, we're not wiping out the hard drive and completely reloading from scratch. With this, we're getting a new device from whichever hardware vendor that comes with Windows pre-installed on it, and we're provisioning that device. So we're customizing the operating system that's already on the device rather than completely loading a new one. Uh, and this also kind of goes along with a lot of the more like cloud management. So a lot of times the traditional deployment requires the device to be uh, on-prem, right? Like you need to have it where it can talk to a domain controller, it can talk to your imaging servers, all that kind of stuff. Uh, with autopilot and the, the modern Windows deployment, you can deploy a device for somebody uh, anywhere they are in the world as long as they have an internet connection. Uh, and then just a quick review of what the autopilot deployment process looks like. So you would buy hardware from a vendor like Now Micro, for instance, and we would get we would take delivery of that hardware in our warehouse in our production facility and grab the device information from that hardware and upload it into your uh, Windows autopilot tenant in Azure. And then you would be able to go into that your your Intune and autopilot tenant and you know, pre-deploy apps and settings and uh, security policies to those devices. And then those devices get shipped from Now Micro either to you or even directly to the end user. 
And at that point, the device gets booted up. It sees that it's part of Windows Autopilot and gets all of those things that you've deployed to it. And then after a usually pretty short deployment process, it's it's all ready to use. Uh, not thanks for attending, but <laughs> you'll see that in a minute. Uh, right now, we're going to go into demos for the rest of the time. So let me bring up that here. All right, so this is endpoint.microsoft.com, which is the Microsoft Intune portal. Uh, and this is also where you'd go to do all of your autopilot configuration. Uh, so what I want to do first is walk through kind of the whole autopilot process. What do we need to set up for autopilot to work? What are kind of some of the prerequisites you need to have in place? Uh, and then we'll even do a demo of running a device through autopilot. So in your endpoint uh, manager console here, you want to go under devices and windows, and then you have windows enrollment and you have autopilot options down here at the bottom. So the first thing you have to do before we can do anything with autopilot is get devices enrolled in your autopilot program. So you can see right now I've got one device in here. So the question is, how do you get devices enrolled? Uh, and there's a couple of ways to do that. So let's see. Check in the chat to see if anyone had a question. All right, um, so I'm going to pull up a VM here. So this VM would represent a newly purchased device from uh, a hardware vendor uh, or a device that we've recently reloaded Windows on. Uh, right now, it's just a device that's off on its own. You know, we could run it through the out-of-box experience here and set it up, but we want to turn this into an autopilot device. So when you're at the out-of-box experience, if you do Shift and F10 on the keyboard, it'll open a command prompt. And then there's a few commands we can run. So we need to go into PowerShell. And again, this uh, meeting is being recorded and will be put on YouTube later, so don't worry about having to write everything down. You can always refer back to the video later. Uh, so we need to set the execution policy to bypass. And then we want to install a script. Get Windows Autopilot info. And it'll ask you to just uh, allow some changes to like the environmental variables and download a software update catalog and just go ahead and click yes to each of those. Okay. So now that script's installed, I can say run that script. So get Windows Autopilot info, and then I can just say dash online and this what this will try and do is reach out to my tenant, pull the device information off this device and upload it directly into uh, my autopilot devices list. So after running that, it'll just install a couple of PowerShell modules here and then we should see a pop up shortly. So there we go, it'll ask for your account. Go ahead and sign in with a, an account that would have uh, Intune administrator uh, rights or better in your Azure tenant. Then you can see it gathers details for that device and then it's going to go through and import and sync that device with autopilot so then we should uh, shortly see it appear in this list of devices uh, so while we wait for that to go uh, that's a good way to do it one off on a device uh, the other option that you have is using a csv file to import the same record uh, so for instance, uh, on this device here, I'll do the same thing as I did before. See, I think I already installed that script. 
Yeah, so I already installed the git windows autopilot info script with the same commands. And then instead of using the online parameter, you can use the output file parameter. And specify a location where you want to save the output to a CSV. And it'll do the same thing where it'll collect the information, but instead of uploading it directly into your tenant, it'll put it uh, in the location you specified on the drive. And then you can see here's all of the information. So it pulls device serial number and the uh, hardware hash, which is this big long uh, list of unique text. So not the prettiest thing to look at, but uh, that's what you need for uploading those uh, autopilot objects. So that's how to get the information off one device and do the online parameter or the CSV parameter. But what if you want to get that information off all of your existing devices? Uh, for that, we can go into Configuration Manager, if you have Configuration Manager. And I made a query in here for the autopilot hardware hash. So if you look at that query, we're looking at the BIOS serial number and the device information hardware hash. And then if you go ahead and run that. Um, John, I think that our, oh wait, did you stop sharing your screen? Oh, I see that now. Okay. Oh, can you guys still, still see the screen? Yep, it's there now. It, it was gone for a second. Oh, okay. Yeah, just team is being weird, I guess. Uh, so just to, if anyone missed that, I just in queries here and I've created this autopilot hardware hash query. And that's looking at the BIOS serial number and the device information hardware hash, which are things that are collected by default by Configuration Manager Hardware Inventory. So you'd be able to run that query and then you'd get a listing of that information. I've only got one device in this lab environment, so I only get one record here. But uh, if you had a thousand devices, you'd get a thousand device record or a thousand records back here. And then you'd be able to take that, put it into a CSV file, and upload all those devices into your uh, Intune tenant. Uh, and where that's coming from, just to a little bit further demonstrate that, if I switch back over to the VM here, is this is all in uh, WMI on the machine. So you can also just run commands to pull it directly. So if I look in WMI for the serial number, there it is. If I look in WMI for the hardware hash, there that is. So. It really, all, all these other things I showed you are just tools to gather that information. And then finally, any new hardware that you're buying, say you're buying hardware from Now Micro, uh, we can gather that information before you even take delivery of the hardware and pre-populate it into your Azure tenant. So you'd really only have to worry about doing this on existing hardware that you have. New hardware, it should all be taken care of before you even get it. Okay. So if we go back to this VM that we started doing earlier, we can see it's successful now. Uh, so all devices are synced. So we should see this device now show up in the list of into or, uh, autopilot devices. And there we go, there's now a second device. Uh, it looks like we had a question in the chat too. Uh, I heard hardware hashes can become stale. Do you know how long they go stale? Uh, I have not really run into that myself. Um, so I can't give a great answer on that. Um, I've had some testing devices in uh, my various lab environments right now, micro for, I don't know, a number of years and the hardware hash still seems to be valid. So, uh, sorry, I don't have a great answer on that one. Uh, so anyways, with our devices now, we can see the device that I had put in here before. If you look at this profile status, you can see there's a profile assigned. And this new device that I put in does not have a profile assigned. So that's kind of the next piece of autopilot is once we have the devices uploaded, we need to have a profile assigned. Uh, so what is a profile? Uh, if we go back to our Windows enrollment, there next to devices, you have deployment profiles. So I've created one in here. Let's go through and just create a new one just so kind of everyone can see what that looks like. You do create profile and Windows PC. 
you can name it something. And then go ahead and go next. And we've got a few different options here. So at the top, you have deployment mode, user driven or self deploying. So most of the time you're going to want to do user driven. This is where during the autopilot process, a user is asked to sign in with their credentials and then the machine is set up for that user specifically. So any device that's going to be like a one to one device uh, or have a device as a primary user. Uh, self deploying would be used for shared use devices, kiosks, um, that type of thing. And a self deploying machine is not going to ask for anyone to sign in. So normally what you'd have with that is. Uh, a device that has like a kiosk profile or something assigned to it, so it goes through autopilot and then it would automatically sign in using the settings configured in the kiosk profile. So generally, again, you're going to select user driven. Once you've done that, you can choose how you want to join Azure AD. So you can do an Azure AD join device or a hybrid join device. Uh, again, you're going to want to try to just do an Azure AD join device. It's going to be a lot simpler. Uh, if you don't need to have that connection back to local AD, uh, I recommend you know going without it if you can. Uh, but if you do have to have the device still joined to local AD and Azure AD, you can have autopilot do hybrid join. Uh, and I'll talk about that a little bit more later once we, uh, if we have a little bit of time at the end. And then uh, Microsoft license the terms, you can choose to hide those. You can show or hide the privacy settings for the user. Um, you can, I generally hide the account change options. You can choose if the account is a standard or an administrator account. Uh, generally, you're going to want standard user account. You know, admin account would just be more for like testing. Uh, Pre-provision deployment, I would generally want to allow that. So if you're not familiar with pre-provisioning, that's where you can set the device on the bench and run it through the device phase of autopilot uh, and then shut it back down. So when you give it to the user, there's only the user phase, which is much faster. You can set your language, automatically configure the keyboard, and then you can apply a basic device name template. So they don't give you too many options here. Usually I do something like, you know, this is my lab, so I'll say lab dash serial. So it'll do lab dash and then a, the serial number of the device as the computer name. If you want to do a more advanced computer name, you can always uh, use like a PowerShell script or something to uh, deploy after the fact and rename devices that have been deployed. There's a question in the chat. Oh yeah, let me take a look. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. Uh, would the would the auto deploy mode set the device as a shared device for user affinity? Uh, I don't know that it actually sets anything for user affinity. I think it just is left blank. Uh, it's not like assigned to any particular user. All right, so that's kind of like a basic look at your uh, your autopilot deployment profile. So you can go next, and then you would assign this out to a group. Um, I'm not going to assign this one anywhere right now because I already built another one earlier that I assigned out. But this does go into a, another important topic, and that is groups and uh, group tags with the devices. So uh, in Intune, you have groups here over on the left side. And then I've already created a group in here for Intune Autopilot All Devices. So this is a dynamic group that automatically updates and contains any device that I've enrolled in Autopilot. And if you look at the dynamic membership rules here, you can see this is the query. So uh, I'm not sure why this is the query, but this is the query Microsoft has, and it does work <laughs> to give you all your Autopilot devices. So one thing though with this is this might work good in a small environment where you all, every autopilot device is going to be exactly the same, but when you start getting any, into any sort of bigger environment, you're probably going to have different autopilot profiles. So how do you target different devices with different profiles? Uh, and that's where the device group tag comes in. So if we go back to autopilot here, in our device list, you can see the group tag column is currently blank. So I can assign a group tag to a device just manually here. So 
So I might have just put that one as an example one, or this one I might put in a group tag of like, uh, you know, kiosk, for example. Uh, and then that'll take a minute and update. Uh, but then what we can do over on the group side is we could create a new group. And we could call it something like Intune Autopilot Kiosk. And I want to make this a dynamic device group with a query. And then it's going to be a query similar to the other one, except we're going to say, show me any device that has a order ID, which is what they call the group tag on the back end of kiosk. So then now this group should automatically pull in this one device that I've assigned to the kiosk group tag to. And then I'd be able to go to my deployment profile and deploy the, you know, a, a kiosk profile that I've made to that kiosk group. And then maybe I want to have just like a default group. So I could create another group that says Intune Autopilot Default. Make this a dynamic group. And it'd be a similar query. We would say, show me all devices that are autopilot devices that do not have a group tag of kiosk. So then you could see this could be further, you know, expanded out as you have more group tags. You could just add further, you know, uh, conditions onto this query to say, you know, show me all autopilot devices that aren't kiosk or aren't admin or aren't hybrid, et cetera. And then this would be like your default deployment group. So there, now we've got a couple of groups and then we have we would have our deployment profiles that we could deploy out. Uh, but like I said, for right now, I already had deployed a deployment profile to these devices. So we're getting pretty close to being able to run a, an autopilot deployment through. Uh, a couple of other things now. So we've got our device in there. We've got our deployment profile created and assigned to the device. Uh, so a couple of other things that we need to have in place for autopilot to work. Uh, the enrollment status page is one of those. So the enrollment status page controls kind of what users see during the autopilot process. Uh, there's just a default one in here, but you can create more of them and again, deploy the different ones out to different groups. Uh, but if we look at this one that's in here, you can kind of see it's got some basic options. You know, we want to show the configuration progress to the user. We can set a timeout. Uh, the default is 60 minutes, but if you have an autopilot that's installing a lot of apps and you think it's going to take longer, you could always increase that, though you know, going a whole lot longer than 60 minutes starts to get a little bit risky. Uh, you can have a custom message that appears if there's an error, so you could put in your information for your specific help desk or, or like a phone number contact in here. Uh, usually I like to have log collection turned on for end users. Um, I would like to, uh, you know, allow the users to reset the device if there's an error. Uh, and then I usually like to block the use of the device until all the apps that the user needs are installed. Um, though you can do a selection here where you can say, you know, wait to block or uh, uh, allow the autopilot process to go through, but only require the, you know, like three specific apps to be installed and then it let it finish. And then maybe the additional eight apps that are deployed can finish installing behind the scenes while the user is using their machine. So uh, this bottom option with the, the uh, app selection is definitely nice. So I'm not gonna make any changes there since that's already set. Uh, other things that you need to make sure are set is this automatic enrollment right here. You need to make sure that the MDM user scope is set to either all or some, and this is controlling who can enroll devices into Intune. So if you have it set to all, any user in your tenant could enroll a device in Intune. Uh, if you don't want to have it set up that broad uh, right away, maybe while you're testing things, you could set it to some and select an Azure AD group of users that are allowed to enroll. But that needs to be all or some. Uh, and then in addition to that, you also need this CNAME validation piece. So there's a few DNS records that need to be in place to facilitate the enrollment if you go to this link that's right in the thing here they tell you exactly the records you need to make so right here we need to have this enterprise enrollment cname record for our domain 
and the enterprise registration record. So once you've set those up in your DNS, you can come back in here and put in your domain, do a test, and it should come back and say that the CNAME records are configured correctly. Uh, let's see, anything else? Um, yeah, a couple of things. So there's the enrollment restrictions then. So uh, under enroll devices here on the left side, there's uh, enrollment device platform restrictions. So if you click into that, this gives you a page where you can choose what type of devices. So, so at the other page, we said who can enroll devices. This page is what type of devices can they enroll? So Android, iOS, Mac OS, Windows devices. And then we can choose if we're allowing corporate devices and personal devices to be enrolled. So right away, before you kind of have everything set up, I might recommend changing this and you know blocking people from enrolling their personal Windows devices. Uh, otherwise, if you turn it the other setting to all and leave this on as allow, uh, anytime somebody signs into their office on their home computer, they're going to probably leave the box checked that says, let my organization manage this machine, and you're going to end up with a bunch of personal device records in your Intune that you're not really managing. So I'd maybe set this to block until you have a more robust like MAM solution or something built out to handle that. Uh, and then in addition to the platform restrictions, there's also device uh limit restrictions so you can choose how many devices a user is able to enroll so for yourself if, if you're the tech person you might want to have a pretty high limit the, the default here is 15 devices uh, but for a standard user you may not want them enrolling 15 devices uh, in your environment you might want to change that down to a lower limit like five devices or something um, but if you do run into weird enrollment issues uh, this is something to check is is what is your device limit set to and have you uh, gone over that, in which case you need to clean up objects out of Azure AD and Intune or increase this limit. Uh, and then the final thing to have in place before you can do autopilot is under tenant administration and customization. You just need to run through this customization and set up some basic stuff about your environment. You know, pick a logo and a color, uh, put in a privacy statement, select some of these options. It's all all pretty straightforward. I'm not gonna bore you with going through this, but it's mostly getting getting the stuff from your marketing team and uh, and getting it uploaded in here. All right, so that's kind of all of the stuff that we need to have in place. So if I go back over to this VM that we uploaded before, I'm just gonna go ahead and reboot this. So now that it's enrolled as an autopilot device, next time it comes online, it should check in with Azure and see that it is now set up for autopilot and we should get a, a little bit of a different look here. And this is uh, Windows 11, by the way, that I'm doing this on. It will look a little bit different on Windows 10, but uh, you know, new devices you're getting are, are going to be coming with Windows 11 anyways, or you know, should be anyways. So you can see it did a few extra like little reboots there. It's kind of just doing a little bit of setup in the background. And any minute now, there we go. So if this was a self-deploying profile like I talked about before, it wouldn't go to this screen. It would just continue along with the autopilot and set itself up. But since we did a user-driven uh, scenario, we need to sign in with a credential here. So I sign in with my account. And then we get a status information about our device being set up. So a spinning wheel for a moment here, and then it should go to, yep. So we have this page that kind of shows us the different steps of the process, which the user will be able to expand out and see what's happening. Uh, under device setup, you'll get your apps. So if you have like five or six apps deployed, it'll say here like installing app, 
you know, two of six or, or whatever, you know, it gives you the user some information about what's happening. Uh, this should go pretty fast because we don't have a whole lot configured right now. Uh, if this does run into an error of any sort, um, there is a debug screen that you can instruct the, the user to go into to look at, or if you have access to the machine, you can look at yourself. If you do uh, control shift and D as in Delta, it opens this autopilot diagnostics page, which gives you more detailed information about the various steps that it's on. So this can definitely be useful for, for figuring out, you know, at a detailed level where the process is at and what errors might have occurred. Uh, and then this also gives the user the option to export logs. Uh, do note that while this screen is open, autopilot is paused though. So you'll want to have the user close back out of this or you yourself close back out of it and have the, the process continue. Uh, in addition to that, uh, if you're remote from the device, uh, in the Intune console here, you can go under monitor, so devices and monitor. And there is this report here for uh, autopilot deployments. And then you'll have a list here of all of the autopilot, recent autopilot deployments that have been happening in your environment. And you know how long they've been, how long they took to run, you know what step they're on. Uh, if they do encounter an error, it should tell you the last step that the device was on. And then if you click into it, it should give you a little bit of uh, at least basic error information about uh, you know what the status of the device is. So that's a good way to look at it remotely. Uh, let's see. Quick really question anything? for you. Yeah. Hi, hi, I'm Melissa. Just a general question. Any idea of the timing? Now I know I'm sure it depends on what apps are deployed to the device, but just to get like the Windows OS up and I'm just curious, um, any thoughts for me as to how long that process takes? Well, you can see on this device here, it actually already finished the device phase. Yeah, which is yeah. amazing to me. And I'm sure it has to do with home download speeds also and yeah, so uh, sure. let me sign in here and then I'll explain it a little bit more. Thanks for a good question, by the way. If I can type. Uh, no, this is uh, not confusing. All right, so you sign in here and then it continues along with the user phase of autopilot. So there, there's kind of two phases of autopilot. There's the device phase and the user phase. So the, the first part there was the device phase where it installs all of the things that are deployed to the device object. And then once you sign in, the user phase happens, which is when all of the stuff that's a, assigned to the user object goes through. So on this device, it's a, you know we have I haven't really set up anything in this tenant. There's there's no apps that are installing. There's very minimal settings that are applying. So you can see the last couple I ran through that the whole process took three and a half minutes. You know so extremely fast, right? Uh, but yeah, as you start adding more and more apps, um, especially if you have big apps that are like multiple gigabytes that need to be downloaded, um, you definitely can start having a lot longer of a process. So. You know, if you're on a if you're at a location with a fast internet connection, like a, a business, or if you got you know a home internet connection that's 100 meg plus, or, or even like 50 meg plus, um, and you you know I'd say on average most clients I work with, you're looking at 20 20 something minutes maybe for the autopilot process, you know, including the device and the user phase. Uh, but I've definitely seen it be longer. I've seen it creep up towards that hour before, uh, just for devices that have a lot more stuff happening. Uh, and then obviously, yeah, somebody with a really slow internet connection and you're having them download, you know, four gigs worth of apps, it's going to be a lot longer for them. And they might even run into like the timeout. So, uh, yeah, it's a, a balancing act to, to manage, right? Uh, let's see, I have this set up to use Windows Hello right now, so it wants me to configure that. Uh, it also does support doing MFA in here, and everyone should have MFA set up for everyone. Uh, and if you if this was on an actual piece of physical hardware that had like a, a camera and a fingerprint, I would have set that up. But since this is a VM, I just did the uh, um, pin there. But yeah, now we're in the in the device. Uh, really, the only thing I had installed as part of that was the company portal. 
So if you're not familiar, the company portal is essentially the Intune version of the Configuration Manager Software Center. So this is where the user can go and check the compliance of their device. They would see apps that are available to install, um, do like policy synchronizations, all that kind of stuff. So uh, company portal is the, uh, the thing to keep in mind there. All right, uh, so we got to keep moving along so we don't have that much time here. Uh, we've got a device now that ran through autopilot deployment, uh, but now we need to have stuff actually happen on that device, right? We're like we want apps to install and policies to apply and all that kind of stuff. Uh, let's see, we got another question here quick too. De desktop support could pre-stage the device by pre-provisioning the device. Yes, that is a good thing to call out, John. Is um, I did I did talk about that uh, pre-provisioning mode before. And the way that that works is when you come. So remember, we went through the autopilot and came up to the user sign in screen. At that screen, if you have pre provisioning enabled, you can hit the Windows key on the keyboard five times in a row, and it'll put the device into a pre provisioning mode, which at that point, it'll run through all the device phase of autopilot. Uh, so you could do that, say, like, you know, in your tech office or uh, for instance, if you buy devices from now micro, that's one of the options we offer is you could have our techs back in production, put the devices on the bench, run them through pre-provisioning and then ship them out to you. So when the users take delivery of the devices, it just has to do the user phase, which is generally a lot quicker than the device phase. So that that's another way to uh, potentially help speed things up for the end user. All right, let's look at some apps because that's probably the first thing that people are interested uh, in getting set up. So in Intune, if you go under apps here, you can click add and there's a few different types built in here. Uh, Microsoft has some built in ones for doing like Edge and Office. So for instance, if you want to build an Office app, it's easy enough as just going under Microsoft 365 apps here. And then I can go next and I can just then dis decide which apps do I want to have included in the package. Uh, you know, maybe I don't want to have access in here or uh, I don't know that it, that looks good to me, right? I could include Visio and project if I have licensing for that 64 bit. I want this to be the monthly enterprise channel. Uh, you can do some extra options around shared computer activation. I'm not going to go through all these right now, but basically you'd select all your office options. Go next. Uh, and then here you have the option to assign the app out. So assignments work very similar to deployments in Configuration Manager. So you can do a required assignment where it'll forcibly install, uh, an available assignment where it just shows up in the company portal and the user can choose to install it, uh, or you can deploy the uninstall of the app. Uh, and to, so to do a deployment, I could just say required, uh, add a group. I'll just add my autopilot all devices group. And then now any device or user in that group is going to get my Microsoft 365 apps. Uh, there is also just short links for all users and all devices as well. If you do have something that you want to just go to literally everything. All right, so Office apps, that one's super easy. Let's look at an app type that you guys are probably more going to have, which is going to be Win32 apps. So basically everything that you have right now in Configuration Manager, I'm guessing is a Win32 app, which that's this option down at the very bottom here. Windows app Win32. So you select, and then the first thing it's looking for is an app package file. And if you look at that, it's this .intune win file. So how do we get that? Uh, and the way that that works is I'm going to show here. So I'm going to build VLC Media Player as a Win32 app. So the first thing I've done is got my source uh, files, just like I would for packaging an app in Configuration Manager. I've got my VLC installer, and then I've got my uh, script files that work to do the installation, the uninstallation, um, and I've got a detection method as well, and I've put that all in the folder. You might even just be able to copy your source information that you already have for your whatever all that you're you're currently using for application management. And then we need this Intune Win App Util.exe. So if you go out to the uh, internet here and just search Intune Win App Util, Microsoft has a docs page about how to use this tool. Uh, and then they also have this link to the GitHub page where you can download the tool. 
So once you have that tool downloaded, you just go ahead and uh, run it. So I'm actually going to bring a command prompt over there and run it. So Intune Win App Util. And the first thing it asks for is a source folder. So you just point at the folder that contains the installer and the, and the scripts. And then it wants the setup file. So this is the file that actually does the install. So that would be the batch file, the install batch file, since that's what's running the installer. And then the output folder, where do we want to have it package the, uh, the file? So I just made an output folder here. And then it asks about a catalog folder. That's something that has to do with like Windows S mode. You'll probably never use it. So you can just hit no there. So it essentially just zips up all that, that content and then puts it in this dot Intune win file. So now back out here, when I'm creating that app, so let's go through that again, add Win32 app, and then I browse for that app file that just got packaged. And then from here, it's very similar to building an app in like Configuration Manager. So you give the app a name, uh, a description, put in a publisher. Uh, you can select like a nice logo to use to make it look nice in your company portal, uh, add any additional optional information here. Uh, and then we need the install command and the uninstall command. So that'll just be our batch files that are doing our install and uninstall. And then we want this to install for the system, not for the user, although you, you can do a user-based install if you have an app like that. You've got your different exit codes, just like in Configuration Manager. Uh, you can set requirements for the app. So this is a 64-bit app. Uh, it doesn't really require a specific version, so I'll just pick an older one. Uh, and then you got some other basic things there. You can also add custom requirements if there's a, a, a custom thing you wanna check for. Uh, detection rules is also very similar to Configuration Manager. You can say manually configure detection rules and then add a detection rule that's in, you know, an MSI installer, a file detection, a registry detection. Um, in general, what I like to use though is a script detection because then I can just have the same script that I use for detection in Intune as I use in Configuration Manager. And I don't have to worry about manually creating the rules each time. I can just maintain the script. So I've already written a detection method as this PowerShell script here. So all I have to do is just browse for that detection script. And that detection script is just checking for uh, a registry key basically. But I like to have it as a script. Uh, you do have dependencies here as well. So if there's dependencies that need to be installed before this app can install, you can add them here. Uh, this also does have supersedence. So if you're building an, uh, a version as app to replace an older version, uh, that also exists. Uh, and then once again, you can assign the app out as required, available, or deploy the uninstaller. So uh, I'm not actually going to assign this one out right now. All right, create. So that is a lot of steps. Uh, fortunately, there's a newer way to do this that does make things a lot easier that just recently became available in Intune. So if you click add here and then go under here, there's at the very top Microsoft Store app new. So what this is, is using the Windows Package Manager. Um, if you're not familiar with it, there is a new tool in Windows 11 and newer versions of Windows 10 called WinGet. That is the package manager in Windows. So if you've used Linux ever in the past, you're familiar with like an apt get, something like that. Uh, very similar. So it's a, a command line installation tool for installing software from the Microsoft Store. And then as you also may or may not know, the Microsoft Store uh, was updated last year to support Win32 apps in addition to UWP apps. Uh, so what this lets us do is have an option to more easily install and maintain a piece of software like VLC, for instance. So uh, just to kind of show you the WinGet tool on the device here as well, uh, from the command line, you can just type WinGet. 
and then you get your list of all the commands for it. So I can say like win get search DLC. And then it gives me a list of here's all the different VLC builds that are available from the store to be installed. And then if I wanted to, I can say win get install you know, and it would install VLC. But I'm not going to do that right now because I can actually build that right through into now. So once again, you do add. Microsoft Store app new. And then select search the store for your app. So this is essentially giving you a back end search to the Microsoft Store. So I can say VLC. And it finds that there's a Win32 version of VLC in the store, and there's also a Universal Windows app version of VLC. So I could choose either one to deploy. Uh, in this case, I'll select the Win32 version since that's the same as the one I just packaged manually. And then I can populate information about it. You know, again, optionally put in a logo, any additional information. And then next, and we're already at the assignment screen. So then I could assign it out. And now it's created. So way easier than having to build the app using like the Intune Win Packager utility. Um, the only downside doing it this way is it doesn't give you the extra customization. So if there's like custom command lines or customization that you need to do, uh, I don't think there's a great way to handle that right now. It would have to be like a post install thing. Uh, but for apps where you just want to have them installed and be managed, these new store app deployments are a great, great way of doing it. Uh, and the other benefit you get out of it too is it'll then show up as an installed app in the Windows Store here in your library of apps. And then these regularly check for updates. So uh, VLC would show up in this list and it would just automatically be kept up to date by the Windows Store. I wouldn't have to necessarily worry about deploying updates for it myself going forward. Uh, so that's WinGet. Definitely keep an eye on that. It's the replacement for the old store for business. And I'm hoping it'll be more of the app management uh, you know, model going forward. OK, so that's apps. Uh, and then I want to before, let's see, we've got 10 minutes left. Uh, <laughs> so much stuff to go through in such a short amount of time. Uh, so on the left side here, there's endpoint security. Uh, what you'd also want to do is create a various different endpoint security policies in here for all the security stuff on your machine. Uh, so any anything that you're doing with security should be done under endpoint security. So antivirus, this lets you create a policy for managing Windows Defender on the device. So doing uh, real-time scanning, uh, scheduled scans, uh, file exclusions, you know, all the different bells and whistles of the, the Defender client can be configured with this profile. Uh, disk encryption, this lets you create a profile to do BitLocker encryption on the device. So again, anything that you'd want to configure with BitLocker can be done here, encrypting the, the base drive, any fixed drives, removable drive settings. Uh, firewall lets you turn on and off the Windows firewall and create exceptions for all of the firewall policies. Uh, and then there's some more advanced stuff here. Uh, Endpoint detection and response lets you onboard devices into Microsoft 365 Defender. Attack surface reduction lets you take advantage of some more of those advanced Defender policies. Uh, so attack surface reduction rules, um, application control rules, that type of thing. Uh, and same type of thing with account protection, just a lot more credential guard, all, all sorts of the Defender advanced features. So anything with security uh, should be done under this endpoint security node. Anything else would be under devices, windows, and configuration profiles. Oh, we did have a question quick too about security baselines. So back under endpoint security here, there is this security baselines node. And Microsoft publishes their security baselines for their different products here. Um, I don't normally deploy these out themselves because they have a lot of settings in them that I don't necessarily want to have all packaged together. Um, but what you can do here is create a profile. And it'll show you like so here's all of the settings Microsoft recommends setting on a Windows 10 device. So I'd recommend looking through this list and maybe picking and choosing the settings that you think make sense to set in your environment uh, and then going and creating configuration profiles to deploy those settings out to specific devices. 
Uh, I found that deploying this this whole security baseline can sometimes cause some weird issues. So to do individual settings, that's back over here under devices and windows and configuration profiles. So you'd go ahead and create a profile for Windows 10. And there's some templates in here that you can choose from for certain settings. But in general, when you're coming in here, you'll go to the settings catalog. So the settings catalog gets you your list of settings that you're probably kind of used to seeing from group policy. So you see you got a whole big list of settings here, uh, including a bunch of administrative templates that have settings. Um, so maybe I want to do something with uh, configuring like an automatic update policy for Office. So I could go into Microsoft Office settings here, uh, update settings. Uh, oops, there we go. And I want to say let's configure the enable automatic update setting uh, and maybe the update channel setting. So I can say I want updates to be enabled and I want the update channel to be monthly enterprise channel. So real easy just to add settings and configure them. Uh, if I wanted to add more settings, just click add settings and I could go through and add more settings to this policy. And then once I'm done, I can click next and assign this out to groups uh, just like I could with my applications. Uh, so that's settings. Uh, again, that's just a real quick look at them. There's obviously a million things you can do there. Uh, the other thing I want to touch on though while we have time yet is update rings here. So update rings lets you control how your devices get patched. So you want to make sure to make an update ring. And then it just lets you pick all of the settings about managing updates on your device. So I want to have you know, Microsoft product updates, driver updates, how long do you want to defer updates? You know, I'm not going to go into the weeds on all this right now just because we don't have time, but um, make sure to go through and configure all your update settings. And then again, you would deploy that out to like your, you know, into an autopilot group, for example. And it's just going to be slow right now, so we're going to ignore that. <laughs> All right, uh, and then last couple of things to mention here for configuration of devices, they have PowerShell scripts. So <clears throat> this is just, I mean, super powerful, right? Like it's just deploying a PowerShell script to the device. So you can literally do anything on a device with PowerShell. Um, so anything that you can't find that's built as a configuration profile uh, or an update ring or security setting, uh, PowerShell script would probably be your way to go. Uh, one of the things I mentioned earlier, a good example here is if you needed to do like a more advanced naming scheme, um, you could deploy a script to rename devices. Uh, you can deploy scripts to do like dynamic time zone stuff, uh, you know, all, all sorts of things you can do here. Uh, and then the last major thing under here is compliance policies. So you'll also want to create a compliance policy to report on the health of the devices that you have deployed. So here you can say report back on all sorts of stuff like I need to make sure BitLocker is on, on the device, secure boot needs to be enabled, code integrity needs to be on, uh, there needs to be a TPM, the firewall needs to be enabled, uh, Defender anti-malware needs to be on and up to date. Uh, and basically this compliance policy doesn't actually change any of these settings. What it does is it checks all of these settings and then reports back if the device uh, is in compliance with this policy or not. And if it's not, it gets marked as non-compliant. And then we could use things like conditional access policies uh, to you know, limit or even prevent access to this device uh, to you know, secure resources are in our environment until it becomes in compliant with the policy again. Uh, one thing I should note too with the compliance policies is it's generally better to deploy these to users than it is to devices. Um, a lot of times if you're coming from like a configuration manager standpoint, you, your instinct is to deploy everything to devices. But with Intune, a lot of stuff actually works better to deploy it to users. Uh, there's some exceptions like the autopilot stuff, de deployment profiles, and some of the apps kind of have to be deployed to devices. But things like compliance policies or you know, even update settings, a lot of the device configuration profiles can definitely be targeted at users, um, even applications as well. So, 
Uh, let's see, anything else to touch on? Uh, last thing I wanted to mention then, I guess, is under tenant administration here. Microsoft does have a newer tool here called Remote Help. So for the longest time in Intune, the only remote option was uh, integrating with TeamViewer, which is a third party solution. Uh, Microsoft has recently added this remote help tool, which is something that you can, uh, so I installed it on this device. It's like an app that you can install and then launch from the start menu. And it would work very much like a team viewer where the user would get a code and then you would have a copy of your app as well. You'd type in the code and you'd be able to establish a remote session, uh, which does support uh, UAC elevation and everything. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you have to pay extra for access to this remote help app though. So unless you're an education customer, if you're uh, lucky enough to be education, you get it for free, but everyone else, you gotta pay for it. <laughs> so uh, education customers, you know, definitely check this out. Uh, and then, I mean, it's a good tool. Um, if you gotta pay for it, it's not a bad option either. Uh, if you're looking for another paid option though, uh, now Micro, as I mentioned, does have our DICE tool, which integrates nicely with, uh, with Intune and uh, allows you to do unattended remote access of a device, whereas remote help does require the end user to be there, so. Uh, okay, uh, and then the scheduled end time is in just a couple of minutes here, so I don't think it makes sense to start on anything new. Uh, does anyone have any questions about what we covered? It was kind of a, a whirlwind there, but uh, that's in short, essentially everything that you would need to do at a basic level to support a basic autopilot deployment in your environment. Uh, Mike says he likes printers in the uh, <laughs> the comment. Yes, there's uh, printing is a uh, that's a whole another discussion when we're talking about your your fully cloud devices. Microsoft does have a solution called Universal Print that I would recommend looking at. Um, otherwise, a lot of the other print vendors like uh, Papercut uh, that have like a Follow Me Print thing with like cloud printing. You know, you just talk to your print vendor. 